Okay, we're back. <laughs> Welcome to Tea Time with Dorina. I hope that you all have your tea or your beverage. And um, thank you for joining us, okay? We had a little, I don't know, trouble with live, so I had to relocate, okay? So hopefully, I hope that you join me back. Uh, let me know that you're with me by saying hi, Dorina, and um, we'll just start again, okay? All right, and um, like I was saying, um, well, I told you I was drinking um, toasted coconut almond bar. And so there may be some of you out there that do not like coconut, but I do, and that's my uniqueness, and that's your uniqueness, and they both matter, right? Okay, tea time. Okay, let's fill our cups. Yay! Barquita's back. Thank you. Okay, so let's fill our cup up with lots of wisdom tonight, all right? So we're just going to start, you know, from the beginning so we can get all the goodness all in one take, all right? How about that? So um, uniqueness, uniqueness means that you are incomparable. That is who you are. And you know, um, most of you that have uh watch some of my previous um live videos you know that i am a uh dr caroline fan and she says that you are a standalone designer babe and so <clears throat> make that personal and say it with me i am a standalone designer babe that is who you are and don't you let anybody talk you out of it and start telling people you know i am a standalone designer babe because that is again who you are okay all righty so like i said before no one walks like you no one switch like you <laughs> No one's shaped like you. No one talks like you. No one smiles like you. No one frowns like you. Okay? And you know what? Even though some of us may have the same taste in fashion, no one has the exact same fashion as you. And I was saying that I like, I like variety myself. And there are like people's, uh, the way that they design their homes and their living rooms and stuff like that. I really uh, like admiring the differences. And some of them, you know, I wouldn't, you know, decorate my home like that. But I think that, oh my goodness, that is so nice. You know, because that they thought of that. Out of their own uniqueness, they thought about that. And so there might be something, not everything, but there might be something that would cause you to, um, you know. <laughs> okay, Marquita says, Women of Wisdom t-shirts, I am a standalone designer babe yeah <laughs> good idea and um so yeah i like that and so you know i i you know i may be uh galvanized or inspired to use something that they use but i wouldn't use everything and so you know we all just kind of pick and choose according to our own taste and that makes us unique and we need to admire that of one another not compare or be jealous or envious and like i said you know i used to 
think to my, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to have a bigger top size, you know? Um, and some people that have a bigger top size, they're thinking, I want a smaller top size, you know? But we have to learn how to become okay with who we are and how we're made up and how um, we decide to do things. What we decide to do, how we look, how we are made, that makes us who we are. And we just need to accept that, right? Okay, so there are unique, significant features, individual features that has always been inside of you. You were born with those things. And you know the sad thing is uh, schools, you know, they try to homogenize the students. We do that on businesses and everything trying to uniform everybody and make everybody, you know, the same. But no, that's not, you know, some people learn different because they are different. Everybody's different. And so we'll get to that in a little bit too. But like I said, I want to take you down the short science trot down chromosome lane, okay? So I used to study chromosomes and, um, you know, I, you know, well, the Lord just had me studying chromosomes and the brain and all that kind of stuff. And so I really like getting into all the significance of it and how it connects to who we are. And, oh man, it is amazing when you start really learning and digging, you know, studying things and getting information. I'm a learner, so I just, I love learning, okay? So anyway, our bodies are made up of billions of cells, okay? And inside most of the cells are chromosomes, okay? And what is a thread-like strand, of um, uh, that contains like a hundred and even a thousands of genes, G E N E S, not the ones we wear. And genes determine our physical traits, and they determine our characteristics. Okay, so our physical traits, like you know, what color eyes that we have, are um characteristics you know you know whether we're lean more towards being uh creative or uh, uh you know what i mean the characteristics are you know stuff like that our skills things that we're naturally talented with okay and you know what these things are transferred all the way back from the third and fourth generation. Now, you know, I have a daughter, uh, and um, she's actually getting ready to turn 40 next month. And um, when she was born, she had red hair, red hair. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my goodness, where does red hair come from? And, um, cause I didn't have red hair, her dad didn't have red hair. And so I was asking my dad about it, and he said, well, you know, it comes back, you know, from the family, generations in the family, you know. And I'm like, wow, okay. And so some people, the, I remember the doctor asking me, he said, does she have a white dad? No. No, she doesn't. But even if she did, Maybe her hair would have came out red. Maybe it wouldn't have, right? Because, you know, it doesn't matter what color you are. You know, there's all kind of people have different color hair. So, you know, that was, that was on him, not me. So, anyway, yeah. So, so, can you see that? Can you see how, you know, we're so different physically? We're uniquely made. 
physically, and even how we use our brains is different. No two humans are genetically identical. Now, we know that to be true. Viking Scottish DNA. Wow, see, look at that. And so, yeah, so I, you know what? I have German in my background and, uh, um, you know, Native American in my background. And so, you know, but the neurons in the human brain receive signals from a thousand uh, other cells. So you got all these different cells within us and, um, you know, okay, let's take this for instance. You have a mom and a dad and they have, let's say they have two kids, okay, a boy and a girl. And those two boys, I mean, the, the boy and the girl receive their chromosomes from, you know, from the mom and from the dad. And so part of those passed down genes from those other generations are mixed in there. And you got a son. And he comes out and he looks partly like the mom or partly like the dad or mostly like the mom or mostly like the dad. Then you got the daughter and she comes out, she's got a whole different DNA, you know. And so, you know, all these different cells make up new people when they join together. Now, you know this is amazing and you know that man could not come up with something like that. Okay, and so, you know, that we're physically, if we are physically made to be different, then we're made to be different how we think. And we are all unique. We are all part of a big puzzle. And we bring all of our uniqueness together and we become a masterpiece. Oh, if we could only unite and work together, every culture, every person have something to add to the table. This would be a beautiful world if everybody understood that. Instead of comparing ourselves, oh, she got this and she got that. I don't have this and I don't have that. Oh, that's so depressing. But, you know, be content with what you have and who you are. Now, you know what? I'm talking to me too, you know, because I mean, I've dealt with some stuff too, you know, so I'm not just, you know, giving uh, this to you. I'm listening to it too, and I'm taking it in, okay? Because, you know, some things, some things is an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. If you are joining us, um, let me know that you are with us by saying hi, Dorina. Okay, this is a good time to take a tea break. Tea time. Mmm, boy, I got my, my um, half and half and a little uh, honey added to it. <laughs> Makes it taste really good. That's how I like that. Okay, so Dr. Caroline Lee has a um, teaching on seven pillars of thinking. And so if you want to write these down, you can and look them up later. But um, these are the seven pillars of thinking. And what she was saying was that what makes us so unique is that in each one of these pillars, you know, each one of us, our thought process go through all seven, but the percentage of each, uh, each one of them is what makes us unique. Wow, the process is real. Okay, so number one is intrapersonal intrapersonal. Number two is interpersonal. Number three is linguistics, language. 
Number four, I'll slow down because uh, you're writing. Number four is logical slash mathematical. These are ways that we think. Five is kinesthetics. Kinesthetics. Okay, now with, with kinesthetics, oh my goodness, I got a child that, you know, percentage is high in that area. And what that means is they learn more by hands-on, by being active. You know, can't you see how in school, you know, you can see the homogenizing in school? You know, how they try to uniform and get everybody to learn the same way? Well, a kinesthetic child does not learn by just sitting and listening. They have to have hands-on experience. So you can see that. Number six is musical. And number seven is visual spatial. Okay? Some people are more visual. They, you know, they learn more by what they see, you know, like video presentations, things like that. So, so now these are the things that make you unique. Okay. So we're talking about your, uh, uniqueness matters. Okay. Now let's talk about why your uniqueness matters. Oh my goodness. Because you, like I said, you have something to add to society. And that's why it, you know, when you raise the bar and be who you are, you cause other people to want to be who they are, to bring out your uniqueness, the trueness of who you are. That is beautiful. And you know, that is something to be admired and to have confidence in just being who you are and not really caring about what other people think about you and, and not being people pleasers. These are things that we have to grow out of. And it's not too late to grow out of these things. And this is, this is wisdom. You know what? You will hear over and over and over again about not comparing yourself because you are incomparable. And that is an area that is so abused that we must remind ourselves constantly that we are incomparable. And that does not mean you're conceited. That does not mean you're overconfident. There is a difference in just believing in you, your skills, your ability, and accepting who you are. It's a difference than, you know, thinking of yourself higher than what you should think and thinking that you're better than other people just because you uh, possess some type of skill or you can, uh, you got to wider vocabulary that doesn't make you better than anybody else you got you're more educated or maybe you're real skillful musically you know and you just naturally pick up instruments and play. that does not make you better than anybody else you're just flowing in your uniqueness and we all have something that makes us unique and we need to grow in it and display it so that other people can be uh, inspired by it. Okay, so you know what? I want to share with you some um, mm, what women, what women have added to the table because they discovered their uniqueness and they use their abilities and the way that they think, you know, has caused them to invent stuff and add stuff. Look at some of the stuff. Listen to some of the things that women have invented that has changed the world, okay? 
One woman, her name is Mary Anderson, and she invented the first functional windscreen wiper in 1903. Okay, windscreen wiper. Come on now. Whoo! <laughs> That's good, all right? She said, love it, flow and grow in your uniqueness. Yeah, girl, high five. Yes. All right. <laughs> and so, it, so listen to some of this stuff. Okay, the paper bag. In 1868, Margaret Knight came up with that idea. With the flat, you know, the, the, the flat four-corner uh, paper bag. That's where we got it from. A woman invented that, okay? That came from her. She thought about that. Okay, and this one is called a Kevlar. I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not, but it's K-E-V-L-A-R. Now, a woman named Stephanie in 1966 came up with this, and it's a, 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 it's a, a material that is strong, stronger than steel, okay? So it can um, stop bullets, okay? So we know that the, you know, safety department is using that. A woman came up with that, okay? So let me just list some of the things that women have invented by using their uniqueness, their unique process of thinking. Disposable diapers, woman. Dishwasher, woman. Alphabetic blocks to teach children, women. A circular saw. Solar house. And the computer, Grace Hopper. And you know, there's some other things that the uh, women have invented. And, you know, back in the days, in the 1800s or early 1900s, they didn't give women the credit, you know. So, so the man got the credit. So there's some other things that women have uh, invented that men took credit for. You know, you know, you know, I mean, come on, you know, we didn't get treated right, okay. Now, today's uh, times, you know, we have the ability to step out and be all that we want to be, especially right here in the U.S. You know, there's some other countries that still are not allowing women to be uh, unique you know, or to display their inventions or they can't even think about even coming up with anything. If they did, I heard, was it today? I heard in another country, if women had fingernail polish on, they would cut their fingers off. Now, now come on, we in the U.S., we don't have to be concerned about that kind of stuff. So, you know, we can express our uniqueness, you know, right here, you know, and all the things that you have to add, it really doesn't matter whether you invent anything or not. You are affecting somebody because somebody is watching your life, you know, and they're thinking, wow, if she could do that, I could do that. You know, oh, wow, if she could handle all the stress and all the, she can go through all of that and still be a strong woman, I could do that. You know, in your unique, your, your uniqueness and who you are and how you handle things, you know, is important and it all matters because you are affecting somebody else, you know. And so give yourself a high five. <laughs> so um, what you bring to the table 
no one else can bring. We could all be sitting around the table and we could have a discussion and you will think of something that nobody else would think of because you're unique and it's like, oh, wow, I didn't even think about that. Oh, that's a good idea. And so never be afraid, even if somebody don't pay any attention to those that have something negative to say because they're still working out some stuff or they haven't even got started yet. We just have to show grace and mercy towards some people, okay? So don't worry about that. But I want to share with you what a Welch, it's a Welch proverb I want to share with you. It says, a seed hidden in the heart of an apple is an orchard invisible. That's powerful. That's powerful. So don't ignore the truth, your inner truth. Don't ignore who you are in the inside. Don't think that you are not valuable and you don't mean anything. You know what? You'll be surprised how many people miss you when you're gone. You know, and they look forward to seeing you the next day. Even co-workers at your job, they enjoy, you know, being in your presence. Or you may enjoy being in their presence. It's just something that they add to your life, you know. And so just remember that your uniqueness matters, okay? Okay, so I want to announce and let you know... Tuesday, September the 29th, we will have Karen Bowling with us. Um, she is from Nebraska Family Alliance. She is the, the director there. And we are going to talk about uh, generational legacy transfer. And so that's talking about uh, leaving a... Leaving a uh, uh, a legacy and mentoring, you know, other women, you know, and things like that. So we're going to get the wisdom out of that and we are going to enjoy ourselves, right? Okay, so I look forward to the next time. Plus, I need to let you know now, anytime that we have a guest on Tea Time with Dorina, I have to do that on my uh, personal page because Facebook does not allow you to uh, have guests live on your business page. So this is my business page, but I will make it public so that you can join us. Um, so just look for Dorina Smith. Uh, Facebook page and that's where we will be it will be at 7 p.m. 7 p.m. so and then invite some people start sharing um, the video and start inviting people because we as women we need to be helping one another and uh, bridging that generational gap between the young women and the older women, the teenage girls. We need to let uh, them know that we all care for one another. No one can teach another female like a female can. So we do need each other and we need your uniqueness and it all matters, okay? Okay. All right. Well, this is Tuesday Tea Time with Dorina. I love you. I'm out. And remember, walk in wisdom. All right? Bye-bye.